In my opinion, very few people deal with anger, fear, and guilt in the correct way consistently. Um, anger, fear, and guilt can actually be very useful in helping you recognize things that you need to recognize. Um, but instead, most people just suffer with those negative emotions for a very long time. And after they finish suffering for a long time, then the next step is most people will say, I'm not getting anything out of this, and so I'm going to deny those emotions, which is even worse, because then they come out in all kinds of unexpected ways, like neuroses or alcoholism or something. So it's even worse to go into denial. What's really useful to recognize, in my opinion, is that these emotions are trying to tell you something very important, and rather than simply remain oblivious to what they're telling you or be in denial about it, if you can actually understand that you are feeling that emotion and become conscious of it and face what those emotions are trying to tell you, then you can get rid of the negative emotion and you can fix whatever problem it's telling you about. So let me go through, through all three of those emotions quickly and give my opinions on what they're telling you. First is anger. In my opinion, anger almost always represents denial, and that might not be apparent at first, but uh, think about the five stages of acceptance, for example. There's denial, anger, bargaining, uh, sadness, and acceptance. First you're in denial, and as you start to overcome your denial, the next emotion you feel is anger. If you tell the average American that there are hobgoblins that live under their house, the average American will just laugh at you. But if you tell the average American that uh, they're poisoning their children with the food they feed them, the average American will become very angry at you because subconsciously they recognize that you're telling them the truth. They just are in denial about it. They don't want to admit it to themselves. So anger really, in my opinion, almost always represents denial. Now you may think, well, I'm angry at my boss or my significant other or the guy who cut me off on the freeway the other day, and I'm not in denial. I, I know that they're being unfair to me. But actually, here's what you're in denial about. You're in denial about your ability to control that situation. You'd like to think that you're a strong, autonomous person and your boss can't push you around. But actually, you, you are vulnerable in that situation and you don't want to admit it to yourself. If you simply face the fact that, yes, I'm vulnerable in this situation and that's why I'm angry, and uh, my choice is to either accept the situation the way it is or work to change it uh, rather than just being angry about it. If your boss pushes you around, you have to either accept it that, you know, I have to put up with that, or you decide that I want to spend some time looking for a new job or gaining some other skills so that I can't be pushed around anymore. Um, you'll notice in life that almost always the most successful people are the ones who focus on how they can change the situation. Even if someone else is 99.9% .9 to blame, there's usually something you could have done to change the situation um, and to get over that problem that's occurred. And the least successful people are almost always the ones that just look to blame other people and become angry at other people because they don't want to face that they could have changed the situation. Um, now I know you may think that, oh well, I've had terrible injustices in my past and you know I have a right to be angry about that. Um, which is true. Uh, I'm not saying that there isn't terrible injustice in the world and that we shouldn't try to overcome that. Um, but if it's happened in the past, there's really no other choice that you have but to accept it. It's already occurred. Um, and you can either stay stuck at the anger stage forever or you can eventually work towards accepting it. Um, and I know it's difficult. Uh, one thing that I feel always helped me is to uh, focus on how whatever problem that you've had probably pales in comparison to what other people have dealt with in history. Um, just visit a slaughterhouse if you want to see injustice. Your problems pale in comparison. So if you can just get the habit of every time you feel angry, stopping and becoming aware of the fact that you're angry and asking yourself, well, what am I in denial of here? you can really learn a lot in life. I mean, that technique has helped me immensely to the point where now when I feel angry, I almost look forward to it because I'm going to recognize something that I was in denial about and I'm going to learn something. Next is fear, and I could get into a really lengthy and detailed discussion about what I feel are the causes of fear and what it's ultimately telling us, but I don't really have time for that here, so let me just take it for granted that we all understand that fear is one of the worst negative emotions and none of us want to feel fear. 
Um, that's not to say that you want to run around taking irrational risks, but we all want to be able to logically assess the risks and the benefits of a situation and then move forward based on logic rather than based on the negative emotion of fear. Um, there's really one very simple way to overcome fear, and I know it's going to sound glib, but the way to overcome fear is just to face it, to ruthlessly face fear. And unfortunately, most people don't do this. They get caught up in the fear and they are continually driven by it, or they go into denial about it. You really just have to turn and ruthlessly face fear. Now, you may not be able to do this with all types of fear at once, but you can start doing it immediately with some types of fear. You just recognize that they're not rational, that they are diminishing your enjoyment of life, and uh, that you're not going to put up with it anymore. And after a while, it becomes almost enjoyable to face these different fears in your life because you know that you're going to defeat them every time you face them. Lastly is guilt, which in my opinion is probably the easiest of all negative emotions to understand and overcome, and yet unfortunately so many people have difficulty overcoming their guilt. Um, guilt is basically just telling you that you've hurt someone else or something else, and ultimately, in my opinion, it's telling you you've hurt yourself, because whenever you hurt someone else, you're really just hurting yourself. But nonetheless, everyone can agree that you feel bad and guilty because you've hurt someone else or something else. And unfortunately, people go for decades carrying guilt and suffering with it, or they go into denial and cause themselves all ty types of problems like drug use and depression because they're denying their guilt. And it's really just so simple to overcome guilt. Guilt is telling you you need to atone for what you've done. And once you atone for what you've done, the guilt will go away. Um, it's tragic that so many people don't realize this. I don't care if you've killed 10 people. You can go to the third world and save 20 children. There's nothing that you've done that you can't atone for in some way. Now maybe you can't atone to the actual person that you've hurt, but you can still atone for it in some other way, and once you've atoned for it, the guilt will go away. So those are just my opinions on what these negative emotions are telling us and how to become aware of it and then overcome those negative emotions. And I can't really prove any of it scientifically, but I think if you really practice at it and practice at becoming aware of what these emotions are saying, you will hopefully realize that uh, you can learn from and overcome these emotions.